Hey nerds, what's up? Today I'll be doing a dual book review of two books, Rosewater by Tade Thompson and To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. See you after the jump. So usually I'm more of a fantasy gal, but recently I've kind of been on a sci-fi kick and I'm not sure why, but I picked up these two books very recently and I just wanted to do a quick review of them together. Uh, so I will start with Rosewater by Tade Thompson. Um, this book actually came out in 2016, but I have more recently started hearing about it as it's gained, I think, a little bit more traction. Um, and I was really interested in the premise and it's been on my to read list forever. So I finally just like bought it and decided to read it. Um, and just so you can know what it's about. Rosewater is a town on the edge, a community formed around the edges of a mysterious biodome its residents comprise the hopeful, the hungry, and the helpless, people eager for a glimpse inside the dome or a taste of its rumored healing powers. Caro is a government agent with a criminal past. A sensitive, he can navigate the massive psychic space created by the dome. But when something within the dome begins killing off other sensitives, Caro must defy his masters to avert a horrifying future. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I think it's a good premise. Um, let's start with the good. There's a lot of good about this book. Uh, the first thing is that it takes place in Nigeria, which I always love when we can get away from Eurocentric sci-fi and fantasy because there's just a lot out there. Um, so this is an African-based fantasy, which I think is really great. Well, I guess not fantasy, sci-fi, but it's really great. And um, I really loved the science fiction portion of it. I loved the biodome, I loved the alien, I loved how his kind of like superpower worked through biochemistry and biology. That stuff was super interesting and I was really gripped right away with those storylines. Um, and I also loved the plot. Like the plot was very interesting, how he didn't know what was killing off the other sensitives and there's this whole subplot with America going dark and I really felt like when I was reading this, I'm gonna have to read the whole series. I know I'm gonna wanna know what happens. Um, but then we kind of got to the bad part. Um, the bad part is I just hate the main character. I really didn't like him. I didn't like reading from his perspective. Um, he's really misogynistic. He's not that great of a guy. And I actually wasn't sure at first if this was the author not realizing it, <laughs> like realizing he made that character or if it was intentional. And about halfway through the book, based on other characters' reactions to um, Caro, I realized it was intentional. I think the author was trying to make like a slightly dislikable character because not all heroes are great people. And I appreciate that, but it was exhausting reading from his perspective. I already have to deal with the sexualization of women in a lot of fantasy and sci-fi. It's very common in that genre. And so having to read it again was so tiring. And even though I know it was purposeful, I just, I didn't enjoy it. And the worst part is that the main character sexualizes everyone, but then he gets to have this great romance with this character and it, it's, the consequences aren't there to support it. So it was just a real downer for me. And in fact, because I dislike his perspective so much, I'm actually not gonna finish the series, which is kind of a bummer because I really do wanna know what happens, but not enough to read from his perspective again. So because of the main character, I actually give the star, this book three out of five stars. I do understand why it's so popular. I do think it's well-written and a great book, but for me, that sexualization part and the way the main character treats women was just so exhausting. Um, it had to knock off a couple stars for me. So the next book I read recently was To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This was a book that came out late last year, so it's pretty new, and I just saw it in the bookstore and was really interested in the premise, so picked it up blind. Um, I will read the back for you. At the turn of the 22nd century, scientists make a breakthrough in human spaceflight. Through a revolutionary method known as somaforming, astronauts can survive in hostile environments off Earth using synthetic biological supplementations. They can produce antifreeze in sub-zero temperatures, absorb radiation and convert it for food, and conveniently adjust to the pull of different gravitational forces. With the fragility of the body no longer a limiting factor, human beings are at last able to journey to neighboring exoplanets long known to harbor life. Adriande O'Neill and her three crewmates are hard at work in a planetary system 15 light years from Sol on a mission to ecologically survey four habitable worlds. 
but as Ariadne shifts through both form and time, the culture back on Earth has also been transformed. Faced with the possibility of returning to a planet that has forgotten those who have left, Ariadne begins to chronicle the story of the wonders and dangers of her mission in the hope that someone back home might still be listening. So that really grabbed me. I know that the science fiction part isn't necessarily very new. I mean, there's plenty of science fiction that talk about space travel and talk about changing human bodies to live on other planets. That's not very new. But I was interested in the idea that when you left Earth, it was one thing, and then as you're gone, you come back to a completely different Earth. And that, that concept was interesting. Well, this book was incredible. I loved it. Actually, it's a novella. It's very short, so that's why it's another great book to pick up. Um, but what I was so impressed with is that Chambers in 130 pages made me care so much about her characters. There's four characters and they felt real, they felt alive, and I, I was concerned for them and I cared about what was happening. And I feel like that doesn't happen to me in books that are like triple the length. So I think it was definitely a very big skill that Chambers has to be able to do that. Um, I also liked the way she brought ethics into the novella, um, the ethics of science and studying things. So that was really interesting and I, it was unexpected and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, there was actually a part in the second section. So the book is uh, broken up into four sections. And in the second section, there was a part that literally gave me chills. It was kind of like this ending statement and you know a bomb's gonna drop and it just really pulled you in. Um, I read this, I think in one day, maybe a sitting. I just couldn't put it down. It was really emotional and I really enjoyed it. In fact, it did make me a little emotional, which is pretty rare. Um, so I thought it was a masterful, masterful thing. This one was actually a four out of five stars for me. The one reason I take a star away is there were some interactions in the book that were a little awkward. Uh, some things she talks about just weren't quite right. So I did take a star off. However, I do think it's an amazing book and I really recommend you reading it, especially because it's so short. And I liked it so much. I actually bought her debut novel, which is a long way to a short angry planet, a small angry planet, I think. I'm reading it now, but I can't remember the title. Her titles are really long, um, but I'm really excited to get into it because I really, really enjoyed this novella. So those are my reviews of Rosewater and To Be Taught Fortunate. I had a three star and a four star, so pretty decent books. If you've read them, let me know what you thought of them in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you have to say, especially about Rosewater and see if you hated the character as much as me or if I'm too sensitive about it. Um, and if you've read Becky Chambers' other books, I've heard they're amazing and I'm excited to get started with them. If you wanna see what I'm currently reading, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. And if you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you next week. Bye.